just packed up a real money load and it's coming your way. Inside man on shipping heist crew risks everything by openly talking about the theft at his workplace. Honking truck driver is oblivious to obvious heist. Also, with two hands on the wheel, he's not honking anything. Truck just happens to have clearance to accommodate a car driving underneath it. When we first meet the Toretto's, it's at their family restaurant with the hot sister working the counter. But then we never see this restaurant again and no one in the entire Toretto clan has to work there for the rest of the movie. Synchronized driving. Also, no one in LA is driving around today, just these assholes. Okay, so according to Mia, Brian has been coming to this restaurant every day for three weeks, but this dickhead Vince is just now getting pissed off about it? Cliché villain is cliché cliché. The song, Watch Your Back. You can't climb in the ring with all the eight because you think you box. He knows I can box. Yeah, he knows that you can hit him in the face, but we're talking about racing, right? What the hell's going on? The only f person who is inconvenienced by all this is a pizza delivery guy. And I suspect only because the movie had a tie-in with Pizza Hut. Do you really need to lay down a chalk starting line right next to the already there permanent painted white line? Isn't this like playing rock band before you go out to play a live show? I got a 187 in Glendale. Cops are all over. Man, we're good to... Murder. It's fantastic. Also, one murder is enough to tie up all of LAPD's forces so that the illegal and super loud street race can take place. Wait, his car's still running? There was white smoke coming from under the hood, which I usually take as a bad sign. I mean, look at this. You're telling me this car can even run when it does this now wait just a damn minute. Earlier during the race, we saw them driving past 120th Street. And the police dispatcher says they're on Hawthorne, which puts them roughly here. Like, three f***ing blocks from LAX. There was no way in hell these streets would be this deserted, or that it would take anywhere near this long for the racing to be reported to the cops. Toretto! Stop right there! The cops recognize Toretto, but he runs anyway. Which turns out to be a good strategy, since the cops never show up at his house later to question him about the street race in which he was placed at the scene. Okay, so Toretto is running down this alley and the cop had already turned his car around, but apparently the cop can't close the distance before Brian does, way down at the end of the street here. Did anything really happen to Brian's car? He can still get into a high-speed chase with this thing? The station wagon honks its horn at Brian's car, but the station wagon has a red light, which makes it all the more stupid when the station wagon guy honks at a cop and runs into his car. How the hell did the Asian street gang know that Toretto would be in this otherwise random green car driving down a lonely stretch of road? These pictures. You can have any brew you want, as long as it's a Corona. Roll credits. Oh, wait, this is a movie, not a beer commercial. Thanks, man. That's Vince, so enjoy it. Villain backwash. Hey, bro, you got a bathroom? You're upstairs, first door on the right. Two-story house has no bathroom on the first floor. News, we take these things off. These cops make Brian wear the handcuffs all the way back to police headquarters. So this guy owns a restaurant, a house, a professional auto garage, and wins constantly at street racing. What the f*** does he have to be stealing shit for again? Who's manning the Toretto Deli restaurant? Anyone? Makes for a cool shot, but no one who is truly putting a car together would buy all the parts at once, open them from their packaging, and lay them out on the ground like this. It's gonna take more than an afternoon to use all these parts. You know, I think we should go out sometime. No, I don't, I don't date my brother's friends. But I do make myself look good for them if they happen to show up to a party and I wasn't expecting them. Cha cha cha. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, you can take me there. Mia says she's tired of all the fighting, but then teases Vince and asks Brian out right in front of him. Hey, you said you need three of all this stuff? Movie piles an orgy of evidence against the Hispanic street racers by having Hector order parts for the exact number of oddly specific Honda Civics implicated in the truck heists. Oh, come on. You're an undercover cop, man. Haven't you ever heard of parking a few blocks away or using a different car when doing your undercover <laughs> Dude, you are right across the street from these fools. Don't you think waving a flashlight around in their garage is a good way to get caught? He mows like a cop! So Toretto somehow knew Brian was going to do something copish? So he agreed to let the hothead tail him even though he's been pissed at the hothead for hating Brian all movie? He's a cop! I know we need to create some dramatic tension, but all Brian did was break into a garage. How on earth did hothead guy jump to the conclusion that he's a cop? Do criminals never break and enter? Is that something only cops do? Johnny Trans guy spotted Toretto and Brian's green car earlier just because he was driving in their neighborhood, but now he just drives one of his own cars into that same neighborhood without any issue. Dom and crew access the Asian garage through some bullshit hatch on the roof. Also, the Asian garage full of street racing cars has an easily accessible roof. There's no engines. What are they planning on racing with? Hopes and dreams? Yep, hopes and dreams.
They couldn't possibly be putting new engines in later, or as we find out in a second, someone stole them. Movie piles an orgy of evidence against the Asian street racers by having a stash of the exact number of oddly specific Panasonic DVD players stolen in the truck heists in their garage. What, Jess? Dumb. We got a wolf pack. Dude, that took you forever to spit out. Were you worried the guys on the motorcycle might hear you? They didn't see him? We got no way to do it! Yes, thieving is bad, but your garage is not the most fortified place in the world, and even after someone stole your engines, you didn't even crack down on security. A garage full of DVD players and generally psychotic behavior. And tell me why we shouldn't move on Johnny Tran right now and see- Can the FBI arrest someone based on the illegal break-in of an undercover cop? I mean, why not make everyone an undercover cop if you can just break into any place and find evidence? I watched my dad burn to death. Main character had a dad who died doing the same cliche. Random unexplained shot of a car graveyard. He's made his decision. We're gonna move on Johnny Tran and his guys at 1700 hours. Why so long? That's like otherwise. five o'clock in the afternoon. Would they really take the unnecessary risk of letting their only undercover officer in the street racing world participate in the police raid of a street racing team? So these FBI guys are gonna crack down on an Asian gang, but why are we seeing Don and Letty's sex scene during it? Does their sex have anything to do with this sting operation? The DVD players were purchased legally. So naturally, they would store them in the garage of their race cars because that's what you would do when you're a gun-toting Asian street gang. You buy electronics in bulk and store them for safekeeping. I know there's no way in hell that you paid for all that shit that's under the hood of those cars by doing tune-ups and selling groceries. Well, yeah, he won a load of money in those illegal drag races. You were there. What's up, man? Welcome to Race Wars. And if you can read lips, welcome to Race Wars again. So on the street race to open the movie, they used red chalk to mark the starting line, but at the uber big deal Race Wars, they set out jugs of antifreeze to mark the center line of the racetrack? Really? See ya. <laughs> Did this guy seriously come to Race Wars without Nas in his car? What a f***ing idiot. This event is too large and too illegal to ever actually be pulled off without cops descending to arrest everyone. Why does the post-race pathway marked with metal trash cans lead racers directly to Toretto's tent? No, don't, don't give me that crap. We're doing this for you. There is no way Brian could plainly hear this from this distance inside a motorhome while techno music blasts outside. Okay, what's the cell number? B, what's the cell phone number? Bull****. You don't know Dom's cell phone number? Does he only give that out to family or something? I mean, even if he didn't give it to you, wouldn't that be high on the list of things you need to get during an investigation? Yeah, I guess no one ever comes up here to this sewage treatment plant or whatever it is. They definitely wouldn't report the suspicious cars parked outside. Civics are stashed somewhere outside of Thermal. So normally when Dom and his crew have to get the cars, they have to make the two-hour drive from L.A. to Thermal? How do they catch up with a truck that has a two-hour head start? We shouldn't be doing this without Jesse. And what did Jesse do? You have three cars. Someone basically plays passenger the whole time anyway. With this rash of truck robberies happening, why do any truck drivers go down this stretch of road? And with no partners or help? Also, these roads never have any other drivers on them. Look, this is the exact same way they've been jacking trucks the whole movie. Isn't it about time the truck drivers put something in the front seat to prevent this, like a mannequin or a stack of books hanging from the front of a semi at 65 miles per hour on the highway? Better take off that helmet. Son of a bitch! I know, what a dick, defending his truck and Dom's car has amazing resilience with a blown out tire. He's still keeping up with the truck with no problem. Isn't it someone's job to make sure the stuntmen at least somewhat resemble the actors they're taking the place of? Okay, it's 2001, we're in a desert. Sure, cell phones work fine. Wow, Dom, perfect timing. How did you know to take this route? Also, Lance was right on Brian's tail. So how is there enough space for Dom to come roaring in like this? This truck driver sees two souped up cars speeding down the street and says, yep, probably safe to pull out in traffic. <laughs> Cop lets bad guy go, and the movie treats it like an act of heroism. End credit scene used to tease a sequel stars the one guy who won't be in the next two sequels. Also, despite a highly probable warrant for his arrest, Dom makes it into Mexico with no problem. It was crappy yesterday, it was crappy the day before, and guess what? Hasn't changed. If I'm going nuts, I'll calm down tomorrow. We'll slip the hot can off the pier. If I'm right about this, they'll thank me. Make sure nobody's living in that can when you stack it. I want all of that in here. They said it was me who was screaming. They say most of your brain sits down in cryosleep. All but the primitive side. What are you gonna do? 
What are you going to do? You have a hair trigger aimed at your head. What do you do? What do you do?